Hey, how's it going? This is Business. I want to talk about a syndicate farming strategy that I've been using in the Necropolis League that was popular many, many, many leagues ago. That because of the changes to the tier 4 rewards and just in general the rewards from syndicate as a whole may gain a lot more popularity and you've probably seen a few people using it so far. What I've been doing, amongst others, is I'm farming tier 3 rewards while not running Mastermind. And the reason I do this is because when you run Mastermind, it will break all of your connections and reset your board. And the reason my board looks like, you know, a crazy conspiracy here is because all of these connections influence how Syndicate members interact with each other, specifically how they are brought forth as like allies anytime you encounter one of them. And what I have specifically been farming is Gravitius in Transportation, because Gravitius in Transportation gives you a full stack of Divination cards, and it's just like a very fun thing to do in SSF. It's okay in Trade League, like you'll get some amount of Divines, you'll, you know, occasionally jackpot into some crazy item like Enlightened 3s, Enlightened 4s, you know, you can always pray for Mage Blood, but in SSF in particular, it's pretty good for like some of the T1 uniques, some currency, and then, you know, always hoping for the jackpot. I'll run through a quick map. So as you can see here, I've completed a transportation. I have my two other objectives left. So I'll run through a quick map and then I'll explain as I'm going the choices of what I'm selecting for the people. And then I could show with like some, you know, help of MS Paint or whatever, what the good choices and the bad choices are and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So we'll go through this map real quick and then I'll explain as I'm going and afterwards. So I have Gravitius here and some other people. The important part of my strategy is that Gravitius is what I'm farming, so I always want Gravitius to be three stars. I have Gravitius and Verici, in this case I'm using Verici as my secondary, isolated away in the sense that these are the only two members that exist in transportation and everyone else is elsewhere. This is important, I'll talk about it, I guess I can talk about it now. But effectively, when you run the safe house and they kick people out, because these are the only two members that are not aligned somewhere else, instead of having these two people, like, effectively, Verici will get kicked down, and then Gravitius will... Effectively, what it would do is it would knock one of them to zero stars, and then you would have to run this encounter and then pull them back in. But because Syndicate works in a certain way where, like, there has to be a captain and a lieutenant, we'll call them lieutenants for the secondary people, it just automatically puts them back into transportation. So it's important that whatever you're farming, in this case I'm doing transportation, but you can do research, you can do intervention, but whichever one you're farming only has two people in it. But, in this case, I want transportation intelligence, right? Because all I'm farming is transportation, so I'm going to use all of these people who are not in transportation, I'm going to interrogate all of them. We're going to build intelligence, right? And then we can check if a Gravitius, sometimes he adds stuff, sometimes he wants to remove them, never do this, work him to death. I don't want to ever use him for intelligence, because if my transportation fills and my Gravitius isn't at rank 3, I've wasted my transportation. Your secondary member, in this case Verici for me, if he wants to add intelligence by being interrogated, I'll do it. But Gravitius is very important that I always have him rank 3. So I'm just going to release him. You're going to see that you release pretty much everyone a lot of the time. So now I have 3 people providing 12 transportation intelligence each. Right? And now I need to go run the other events. I only have 2 events left in this map. So I'm only going to get up to 72, which means that I need to run another map after this one. But we'll trigger the intervention. And something important to do, if you can, is run smaller maps. Because what you want to do is you want to trigger your transportation before you trigger your intervention. An intervention works on a timer. It's like a little timer in the background of the game. When you open the map, it's like, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute after you've opened the map. When you engage a pack, intervention will spawn. Or if you have done another syndicate event in the area, intervention will spawn. So... I rushed, I rushed through this map, I found my transportation, because that's the one that I care about the most, and now I'll go do the other two. In this case, I see Jorgen's rank 3 and I see Guff's rank 2. The important part about all of my people on the right side, 
my fortification, my research, and my intervention people, is that I maintain their stars so that they can be fed into transportation. So in this case, I'm going to rank up Guff. I'm going to go over to Jorgen. I don't want to fill any of these safe houses, intervention and research in particular, because I need them to be active so that I can rank up members as well as rank up the transportation members. So I'm never going to fill if I can help it. So in this case, I'll release. And then we'll go do the research. Now, in the case of me farming transportation, you know that if you have done Syndicate heavily, or at all, I guess, then every one of your maps, you will have a research encounter, an intervention encounter, and then it will flip between fortification and transportation. In this case, because I want to be farming transportation, I'm going to try to fill fortification intelligence but I will very importantly not run the safe house. I'll just leave it at 100% so that for a few maps it'll block fortification from spawning so that I get more transportations. But once again, in this case, I don't care about research intelligence. I definitely do not want to remove rivalries because rivalries spawn good choices between members. The choices that you want, rather. So I'm going to release pretty much. If you don't, like I'll have a little guide coming up shortly. But, like, if you don't know whether a choice is good or bad, just release them. Is, like, what I would recommend. So, I could go kill the map boss, but I've already completed my syndicate objectives here. And so, if we go over and talk to June, you can see most of the safe houses filled, but they still have one turn left. So, I'll go put in another map. Put in a toxic sewer. No nameless there, never lucky. And now, my objective is just to do a syndicate encounter. It doesn't matter which one it is. If it happens to be the intervention because i'm slow to find one so be it this is pretty ideal actually is that i have found a fortification one because as i said i wish to fill fortification to block in the future so we're going to do the fortification encounter we'll check their stars haku's rank two but haku's also my fortification person and leo and jorgen are not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to interrogate haku here so that in two ticks he'll fill the safe house which one tick will be in this map, and I could do the other tick if I wanted, but one tick will be in this map, and another tick will be in the safe house. And then these people, if you haven't set up all of your connections yet, at this time you'll still be doing... Effectively, the, the order of events is you want members to be trusted, and then you want members to be rivals, and then you leave them alone. You don't want to set them back to neutral, and you definitely don't want to remove all your rivalries, and trusted, while well, trusted has poor choices it's a prerequisite to becoming a rival so it's better than neutral so in this case you can click execute if you want when it says already max rank no effect it's pretty safe if you can get into the habit of doing release over it i say this because if you do this you know tens of times 50 times hundreds of times you're eventually going to click this button when it says remove all rivalries and then you're going to want to throw your computer out the window so if you can get in the habit of either patiently reading this and confirming what it is or just clicking release would be my recommendation you don't want to be removing people from your syndicate you can do this while you're still initially setting up especially when you're trying to find you know either crafts early league or if you're trying to set up a different secondary character but you don't want to remove this because once again it breaks all your links well it breaks all their links specifically and in this case my transportation is full but I do want that fortification to fill as well. So I'll go do additional syndicate encounters. Like I'm doing the intervention now, even though it's not necessary. I could just, you know, kill the boss. I could leave the map, go do my Gravitius. But this is good for ranking people up. And once again, for blocking fortification. So my Riker and Vagan are both ranked two. Something you can do while you're initially setting up the board. And this is like very, very bleh to look at. I, I know there's like hundreds of lines everywhere it's very confusing but like when you're first setting it up it'll be a lot easier for you to parse the information effectively you'll you want to keep track of like so i have tora Riker, and vegan here so initially i'll be like is there a connection between vegan and Riker? is there a connection between tora and vegan if not then what you want to do is the ones that are lacking a connection like let's say Riker and tora are neutral to each other they're not friendly they're not rivals I want to leave them as the last two remaining would be ideal but once you're 
your connections, what your relationships are set up. You just care about upgrading people's stars. So in this case, I'll go to Vagan, I'll rank him up, I'll go to Riker, I'll rank him up, I'll go to Tora, I'll release. Once again, I don't want to fill my intervention, I don't want to fill my research. There will be times when you fill them as you're building relationships because there will be options like they become trusted, you gain research. They become rivals, you gain research. In this case, it's fine. Just make sure you don't run the safe house. Don't open and close it. Don't, just don't click the button at all. After a couple maps, after a few inter a syndicate encounters, they'll go from 100% intelligence back down to 90 and you can continue as normal. So in this case, we'll release. So, I can go look at my board real quick. Just to show you. So if we look at the board, I have another encounter left. And my fortification is not filled yet. Haku needs to tick again. So I'm going to go find my other encounter. In this case, it should be the research. Because intervention has happened. Fortification slash transportation has happened. In this case, fortification. You can see my research is down there. I guess I'll skip the walls, whatever. And now I'll go do the research. That way, when I start the next map, after doing this Gravitius, it will automatically spawn transportation again because it's blocked. It has blocked fortification. So just make it so that you loop through the Syndicate faster and faster and faster. God, that is so strong. You can see in this case, all of them are rank three. In my case, I have most of my connections. I think I could technically maximize this some more too. All these green lines should be red lines in an ideal world, and there should be more of them. But in that case, it's not too important for me. I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna click through them, make sure not to click anything too dangerous, like that one, don't click remove rivals, just release them. And now my transportation is ready, and my fortification is full. So now we're going to do, we're going to go over here. We'll run our safe house real quick. Boop. And we'll go get our Gravitius reward. In my case, I'm farming Gravitius because I find the full divination stack to be a very fun reward. Very like, I don't know, like you do get some amount of currency fairly consistently, but it's mostly you're just hoping for like the very rare div cards. And I'll show a little spreadsheet later of like roughly the rewards you're kind of looking for. But in my case, I'm probably going to do it until either I get a mage blood through, you know, MFing or through Gravitius. Interrogate him. Go click the safe house. Oh, I got a Vols the Lotion Corrupted, which is kind of cool. Now, so as I spoke earlier, I only have two members in transportation. You see, this is typically how your syndicate board would look after a mission, right? Or after a safe house. You imprison the person who is a leader, the other person becomes the leader, and now there's no person here. And normally you would have some rank zeros. If I go into another map immediately, you'll see because there is no other choice other than that Verici to be set as the secondary character in the safe house, it will pull the Ricci immediately. It won't wait for him to serve his full prison term. And you can see my transportation is ready already, even though it, if there were other people around, it would not pull the Ricci out like this. In this case, we'll rank up Ricci and we'll start filling transportation. Here, it's kind of up to you on what you would do. So, you need to know the breakpoints. So, you're trying to hit 100 intelligence, right? And any non leader is going to fill 36 intelligence. Any leader is going to fill 48 intelligence. So, depending on whether you're going to find leaders or not leaders, you may need to do a little bit of this, just like these like small little bargains. In this case, I'll just take the bargain, it's fine. I'm not too concerned on it one way or another. And then we would, at this point, you have two choices. Because I chose bargain and not jail, I'm not progressing any intelligence by doing encounters, and I can't generate any more transportation intelligence, but my Gravitius is one star. So to fix this, I still want to run the other encounters. If my Gravitius in this case was three star, what I would do is I would not do any more syndicate encounters in this map 
because I don't want my fortification, which you can see here is ready. I want that to take as long as possible, not falling out. So I want to do the least amount of syndicate encounters possible. But in this case, we run them and go through them or whatever. But that's that's neither here nor there. It's not really that important right now. So something I will talk about, I'll show like a few just like MS Paint pictures or whatever to like try to help give people like a better image of what's going on, I suppose. Or just like a, a little reference guide, I suppose is a good way to put it. Yeah, we'll pull this up. Okay, so effectively when, depending on the connections that people have, and don't, don't look at this as like, this is friendly, trusted, and this is rivals, maybe this is a bad color choice. These are like, these are good things that you want to be clicking, and these are bad things you don't want to be clicking, okay? So, in the case of the good choices, things like drop currency items, drop unique items, you know, you're at max rank, there's no effect. Gaining trusted, gaining rivals, swapping and becoming rivals, these are all things that you actively want to do. In particular, it's very important for when you're first building your connections, you need them to go from neutral to trusted to rivals. This is the goal because the rival outcomes are the things that are going to produce the, the quickest flow of your safe houses. Things you really don't want to be clicking are things like neutrality, remove all rivalries, additional research, or it, so you can do this in any of the safe houses, but effectively anything that adds a safe house intelligence that isn't the safe house you're farming, if there's no additional benefit, you shouldn't be clicking it. In this case, it says it would fill my research, but I gain a rival tag, which is fine by me. I'll lose my research for a few, you know, waves, but it'll eventually fall back into 90% and I've gained a rival, which is important. So this is kind of like a rough, these are good choices. These are bad choices. If it's not here, just do release or, you know, figure out from context yourself what, whether it's a good or bad thing to do. Something else I can kind of show to maybe like have a little visual for you. It's like, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll try it or whatever. So here's, here's like a syndicate board, right? And what I'll try to explain to you is that like, here, we'll just, we'll just like grab things. So these are the two that I'm farming, right? Gravitius and in this case, Verici. So these two, I'm always going to be leaving here. Everyone on the right side. Their objective is to get to three stars and then be jailed in transportation. That is the that is the only objective they ever serve. These two, depending on what your how important your secondary farm is, your primary person's objective, get him to three stars no matter what. And ideally, what you would do, we go boom, the MS paints, is your primary person you're farming, you want to always be captain when you do the safe this case anytime my verici is captain to my gravitius if he shows up in another safe house i'm going to kick him down if he shows up in transportation i'm going to kick him down his his rank in my farming strategy is almost irrelevant the only thing he's doing is like getting me fusings every now and then there are some other rewards that we can go over that are kind of useful but that's like the gist of it the guys on the right side are for training you get everyone to three stars and then when they show up in transportation you jail them you do it on repeat to reiterate a few things put all this back real quick boom you want your in the case that if you're doing what i'm doing which is farming transportation gravitius you want your fortification to be full as often as possible so that it doesn't show up so you get more transportations you want to run your transportations as often as possible. You want to fill it and run it as long as your objective character is three star. You do not want to ever run, open, look at the other two. In this case of intervention or research, you also don't want to open fortification for the same reason. But so the ones that you're not running, if you open them, even if you don't run them, even if you don't go to the boss, even if you don't even walk in the map, let's say I ran, I opened an intervention, all of these members over here would get kicked out, they would derank, and they would get like spread to the far corners of the world. It's not what you ever want to do. On that same note, 
something to keep in mind that's pretty important is you don't get to run masterminds with this strategy because mastermind will reset all of your connections so if you're playing an ssf and you need like a diadem or you're planning on for a bunch of veiled orbs i would highly 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 recommend farming those things before setting up a syndicate board because this is a pretty lengthy process it can take like tens of hours so you should be aware of that but we can show like a couple of the other rewards that are kind of so in this case of me doing transportation with Gravitius, he has the full stack of divination cards. Some things that are pretty good. I found the Essence Scarabs from Hillock were quite strong. I found Catalyst to be quite good. And Verici in my case, because, you know, I'm playing SSF, I have a bunch of uniques. I don't really want to be spending my, whatever it is, Black Morrigans on six links. So being able to just like spam 50 fusings at items is pretty nice. Some other things you might consider farming because like once again you're not limited to transportation you can kind of do it in any of the safe houses but if you do intervention like reliquary scarabs ambush scarabs div scarabs whatever have you scarabs like yes you're primarily going to get the base level scarab and it's not that good but you're gonna get a lot of them and you're gonna get a lot of peeks at them so like some of them will upgrade it'll be okay and by upgrade i mean give you the rare results i'm not a big fan of fortification gravitius because while the weights that you acquire from this are lower thus more rare than the full stacks the ability for you to get a full stack like far outweighs it so i wouldn't recommend fortification i wouldn't recommend research for the same reason hmm i haven't tried scarab trap stash trap stashes in the past have traditionally been pretty okay Map Fragments is probably quite good in SSF. Unique Maps is quite good in SSF. Yeah, those seem fun. Those uh, seem whatever. I'm gonna like blind people for a second here real quick. Boom. Okay, but like this is, so this is like a slightly dated effect of like estimated div card weights. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Gravitius, depending on his stars of one, two, or three, will give you different weights. The effect has like cutoff weights of what the full stack of divination cards will be. The important one to know is that Gravitius rank three has like roughly a seven, it's like 700 ish, 750 ish weight down. Whereas Gravitius rank two, I think, was some, some of his cards were like in the 5,000 weight, and then Gravitius rank one is just like all the cards. Like you're never going to do it because you're. Every time you click him, he's going to give you, like, one of these crappy cards, and you're going to be sad. Gravitius Rank 3, in particular, has some pretty cool cards, right? Like, you're going to get a lot more of the Scarab cards. Their weight seem to have been dropped across the board. You get, like, these random Six Links. You know, Arrogance is kind of cool for SSF. Random Double Corrupted stuff. Divine Beauty is a pretty high weight. This is, like, not an uncommon outcome. I've had a few of them myself. I've had a few Sephiroth as well. The Hunger is pretty good for Taste to Hate. Offering for Shavs if that item ever became meta again. I don't know if this still exists. No, I have seen somebody get this off Gravitius, but so just as like a quick note, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but I think they've gotten rid of the Div cards from Syndicate members, which is kind of unfortunate, in particular for Finishing Touch. But you get other stuff, like I've gotten several Poets from it. I've gotten several of these CB Jewels from it. You can see Azarian's reward is pretty cool. Like, this can give you a Watcher's Eye or an Anima Jewel. It's pretty powerful in SSF, and it's, like, not that low of a weight given, you know, the limit of the weight. And then, of course, you know, you could always, as we get further and further down, like, here's Sephiroth. Here's a Academic. I have three Inspired Learnings or something from this at this point. You got a Finishing Touch from it? SSF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alluring Bounty. I've gotten a few of these. The Avenger, I've gotten one of these. So, like, you can get a bunch of, like, these, like, T1. You can get Legion Jewels. Here's Prince of Darkness. There's also a Moment's Peace. I've gotten a few of those. In particular, these are, like, really good for SSF, but, like, they have a little bit of merit in Trade League, I suppose. Home. There's, like, the Enlightened. There's Mind's Eye. I have a couple of these. I've gotten the Shavros Re Revelation card. Here's Samurai's Eye. Like, you can see as we go down, like, obviously, these cards are going to become more and more rare, and you're going to see less and less of these, but, like, I don't know, man. You can dream. I got a catch recently. That's why it's highlighted here. This is for a fishing rod. It could have been a headhunter, but it wasn't. But that's all good. But yeah, this is just like kind of a, a brief overview of the Gravitius strat and why I'm doing it. 
and how you can do it. Which, I don't know. I hope I'll help y'all. People have been asking about it for a few days now, so I thought I'd put out a video. Anyway, yep, that's it. If you have any questions, I don't know, drop by, leave comments, questions, concerns, leave it on the YouTube, leave it on the Twitch, whatever. Alright, Atlas Pass is also in relation to the whole, like, synth syndicate farming strategy. You're going to want all the June chance, so that you have 100% chance for June. I wouldn't go to 96, the base chance, like, it do you don't have 100% if it doesn't say it contains. So, get to 100%. Important things. Test their loyalty. This makes it so that you gain 100, you have 100% chance to gain an additional rank when you execute. So, people go from 1 to 3, rather than 1 to 2. Pretty important. Helps speed things along. This is just June chance. I have taken effective leadership here. This makes it so the leaders show up more. It's pretty good. I have, very importantly, not taken intelligence gathering. Because as I said, you don't want to be filling the safe houses, if possible, because it disrupts the flow. So, don't take this. Okay, I'll jump that at the end. Thank you. But yeah, you... Don't take intelligence gathering. Make sure you take Tesla loyalty. I would highly recommend taking effective leadership and then get 100% June chance. You can take bribery, or you should not take bribery. Because this will give you options that you don't want. Don't take bribery. I guess you can take pillage and plunder if you want. This doesn't sound very fun though. You're gonna get like petrified randomly from this. For what reason? <laughs> don't take this.